A strong magnitude 3.2 earthquake strikes Michigan. This is the area of the mid-continental rift. There's magma under there, and there's this huge magma mantle plume, as you can see, spreading over the Great Lakes and mid-continental United States. The eastern part goes along the New Madrid seismic zone, and the western part goes along uh, Kansas into Kansas, Alabama, uh, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Texas, and swings west towards uh, New Mexico, Arizona. And this is a mantle plume that's 1.1 billion years old, one of the oldest ones in the Earth. That's that gray horseshoe thing that you could see over the Great Lakes. That's a mid-continental rift. You have the New Madrid seismic zone black line, and you have the crack along North America from uh, Washington, from Seattle and Washington, all the way across the mid-continental United States, and uh, stretching all the way about 2,000 miles, 2,200 miles, into the area of the New Madrid seismic zone. So that's the crack across America, the second large crack through America on the East Coast right there, and you have the mid-continental rift uh, sitting along the Great Lakes. One thing, this is something that many people don't even talk about. And it's full of magma there. The geologists don't know where that magma is coming from, but it's been there from uh, 1.1 billion years ago. Now, this is a crack, for example, that, took, uh, that you could see over Ontario. Let's take a look at the maps now. This is the location of it. Today's earthquake, 3.2 magnitude, and it's about uh, 6 kilometers depth, 9.2 kilometers, uh, 6 uh, miles depth, uh, uh, southeast of Detroit Beach, Michigan. This is our location, right there on uh, Lake Erie, that's Lake Ontario, Lake Superior. Superior was much, once much closer to Yellowstone, and you can see the Great Plains. This is a stretching. It's a stretching of the uh, the basin of uh, North America. As we know, North America is that's a huge river going into the Mississippi. And wherever you have rivers, you have fault lines. This is an area of uh, stretch stretching. Now, this is the mid-continental rift causing the stretch there. That western part of the horseshoe that we saw is causing this rift in the basin and plain area. And the eastern part of it also goes and flanks the uh, area that we saw on the map of the New Madrid seismic zone, which could, should be called the New Madrid rift zone, the real foot rift zone. So that's a rift zone there. The Mississippi going this way, and also these two lakes, and also the St. Lawrence River up here this way. You don't have that much of a crack there for this at one point to slough off southeast and uh, having that area filled with ocean. Something that we see similarly happening uh, in the Great Rift Valley of Africa right here. You can see this, these rivers and cracks and lakes full of magma there and uh, volcanoes. There's just another recent earthquake, 4.7, on the, uh, just two days ago. And um, all the way this way, this will also crack off, just like Madagascar cracked off this area here a long time ago, moving out to the east and causing this part of the ocean here, the Natal Basin. Okay, so at that point, that's going to slough off as well because our Earth is growing. Oh, this uh, mid continent, mid Atlantic, three five point nine, mid Atlantic has been having. That's of course an area of another. Uh, area of magma under there, under the ridge. So these are smaller quakes, but this is what we're talking about here, the 3.2. And uh, this is it right here. Two and a half thousand people reported feeling it to um, USGS. Uh, Windsor, Ontario, just, uh, well, I don't know how far that is from Cleveland, but we'll see. This is the shake map. No, there is no shake map, sorry. No shake map. Going back, my computer is very slow today. I have a lot of tabs open. Um, I don't know why they didn't put a shake map, but they didn't. Okay, 3.2, more people are reporting it. Okay, seven people since we last saw it a couple of minutes ago. And this is it right here. 
Windsor, Ontario, and uh, Cleveland, Ohio. This is, uh, what, about uh, 200 miles distance, and right there, around the border of U.S. and Canada. Okay, Windsor. Michigan, not Ontario, Windsor and Michigan, this one here. There's also Windsor, Ontario, but that's okay. Uh, this is Ontario here. Okay, that's the border. And that's where we got our earthquake. This is what we saw concerning the mantle plume that we saw before. This area here. And uh, the western part going along this way, okay, the western part going into uh, Nebraska, Kansas, Arkansas, uh, Oklahoma, sorry, what's happening? It's playing around with me. Okay, Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, okay and it going down to Oklahoma, Texas, and then swinging into New Mexico and Arizona. That's the way that plume goes. So it's pretty big and it's huge. And um, that's why a lot of people, as I said in my past videos concerning volcanoes in Kansas, there are about 15 volcanoes stretching through Kansas and they're diamond spewing volcanoes. They spew diamonds and uh, precious uh, gems. Um, these diamond spewing volcanoes are called kimberlite volcanoes and they are very explosive and they release a lot of uh, volcanic gases. That's why a lot of people there when they hear these sonic booms under their houses and their houses shake and they don't know what, where it's coming from, it could be the escaping of uh, volcanic gas under your areas in Kansas for example. And it could be happening with uh, areas around here. Oil, we have the, uh, of course, the um, fracking in Oklahoma, but that's another issue. Okay, now let's go to the, this is our area we're talking about. Let's go to our Kuinan hotspot, geophysical evidence for a 1.1 billion year ago mantle plume beneath the mid-continental rift system. And this is our area here that we're talking about. And this is where we had our, uh, you know, earthquake, the 3.2 that we just felt today. The Proterozoic Mid-Continental Rift System in North America, remarkably similar to Phanerozoic Rifting, rifted continental marshes and flood basalt provinces, like the younger analogs of volcanism within this older rift can be explained by decompression, melting, and rapid extrusion of igneous material during lithospheric extension above a broad asthenospheric thermal anomaly, which we call the Queen and the Queen of hotspot. Great Lakes internationally, uh, International Mid-Disciplinary Program on Crustal Evolution, Seismic Reflection Profiles, Constraint End Member Models of Melt Thickness and Stretching Factors, which yield, yield an inferred mantle potential, potential temperature of 1,500 degrees to 1,570 degrees Celsius during rifting. Combined gravity modeling and subsist, subs, subsidence calculations are consistent with stretching factors that reached three or four before rifting ceased. And much of the lower crust beneath the rift consists of relatively high density intruded or underplated sun rift, sun, sin rift igneous material. The isotopic signature of Kuina 1 volcanic rocks presented in a companion paper is consistent with our model of passive rifting above an asthenospheric mantle plume. And this is more of the maps of what we see here, and I'll leave a link below for you for this. They're comparing it with the great rift zone of Africa, of East Africa that we saw. And um, that's what we, that's what will be happening here at one point. This is what it looked like before at 1.2 uh, billion years ago and uh, the Amazon areas that uh, also uh, collided into North America joining them. This is what that mantle plume looked like at that time, right there, that's Hudson Bay. And um, more pictures of the areas, cliffs of 1.1 billion year old volcanic rocks from the mid-continental rift in State Park, Minnesota 
tower above the brilliant blue waters of Lake Superior. This is what they look like. Beautiful lake. And here, more of this. One of the explosions of the Mid-Continental Rift, 1.1 billion year ago volcanic rocks, is an interstate park along the border between Minnesota and Wisconsin, where the St. Croix River cuts through a series of lava flows. Again, these are the lava flows. And the, okay, the talk is about the early history of it, and this is what it looks like right here. Okay, these, you can't see it very well, but this is, these are the Great Lakes right here. Okay, that's our area. Gravity map showing mid-continental rift. The west arm extends southward from Lake Superior, at least to Oklahoma, along the southern Oklahoma Ola Cogan. The east arm goes through Michigan, extending along the Fort Wayne Rift and East Continental Gravity. And here is what it looks like. The volcanics of it and the stretching. And here's more of it right here. Much later. And this is about the beginning of it. About 1.1 billion years ago. Sloughing off, sloughing down, and stretching out. You can see here, right here, compression, reverse faulting, and uplift, additional crustal thickening. Surprise from seismic imaging. Seismic models covering much of the rift are being developed. As expected from Lake Superior data, crust in the mid-continental rift's west arm is thicker than its surroundings and is composed of sedimentary rock underlain by layered volcanic rocks. Combining the results with gravity and seismic reflection data gives views of the mid-continental rift's crustal thickness and structure that will better constrain models of its evolution. Did a hot spot supply the excess magma? It's an extraordinary feature that arose from an unusual combination of a continental rift and LIP, illustrating that over a billion years of Earth history, even unlike events can ha unlikely events can happen, rifting can be classified into two types. Passive rifting, in which forces pull the lithosphere in opposite directions, extending it, and active rifting, where a mantle plume or hotspot thermally, uh, thermally uplifts and stretches the crust above. For the mid-continental rift, we suspect the rifting contains, by chance, overload a plume or a mantle plume or a region of anomalous hot upper mantle. So both active and passive rifting may have been at play. And uh, the failure of the mid-continental rift, it was previously thought to have failed, stopped extending because of regional compression associated with the Greenville orogeny. But New Age dating shows that most of the compressed recording by reverse faulting occurred long after extension and volcanism ended, so the mid-continental rift failure was not due to Greenville compression. Instead, it stopped spreading much earlier, once seafloor spreading between Amazonia and Laurenti uh, was, uh, meaning the area of the St. Lawrence River, uh, the upper part of the um, North America plate, was fully established. And uh, showcase geology. Okay, this vi the video you should see because it talks about the fact that there's a mantle plume there. Nobody knows where it's coming from. There's magma underneath. Okay, that's what they're saying. You should watch this. So please be aware that uh, we have a mantle plume there with magma. A mantle plume with magma right there in this area. Okay, right here. That horseshoe shape that we saw before. Okay, and, uh, everyone there, please be very careful because, as we know, the sediment there is much softer than it is on the west coast, and you could feel the earthquakes on the east coast much more than you could feel them on the west coast for the same size earthquake. Thank you for your support, and if you can, please support my Patreon channel as well. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media.
These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.